Hey YouTube, Monty53 here. Saturday morning, sitting on the back porch, enjoying uh, smoke and uh, a coffee. Smoking a Savinelli 616 from the Pipe Nook. It's a Series 3. And right now, they've got a pretty good sale going on, or Eddie Gray does, on the uh, Series 3. <clears throat> Might want to check it out. And in it, is the Ashton Artisans blend. This is a full bodied English mi mixture with Virginia, Turkish tobaccos, Syrian Latakia, and Perique. <clears throat> I bought this tobacco about a year and a half ago and it's been aging in this jar. And what made me smoke this, I've been smoking this a lot this week, was, uh, not last night, but last week, um, was it Paul Piper was commenting on Kane Rod's <clears throat> live stream about Ashton's guilty pleasure and how, how it wasn't that good. <clears throat> and I mentioned how much I agreed. It's not good. But this Artisan Blend by Ashton's is really good. They have some nice tobaccos, but I gotta say their aromatics are not that great. In fact, this jar right here has got Ashton Rainy Day and Ashton um, Guilty Pleasure in it. I was letting it age for a long time, but this, it, it smells really bad. Very fruity, um, like a chemical type fruit. Um, something you might see in medicine. It's just bad. So this, the first campfire of the year, this is being dumped in. I'm getting rid of it. Just want to say also thank you, like I do, I try to every week to all you guys watching my videos and and uh, <clears throat> giving me shout outs. And I, and I learned some stuff this week that some of the uh, you guys doing videos, I don't know if you realize what you did but I, I'm still learning a lot about YouTube I'm still a newbie especially on the presenter side and like for uh, I want to say a big thank you to full Doddle on his site he's doing that giveaway and he mentioned checking your settings to see if you're on private and I looked and yeah my subscription says private so I guess if you know I, I try to subscribe to everybody you know and if it doesn't show up that I'm a subscriber I feel pretty bad so I checked my settings and put it on public so thank you full Dotto. I appreciate that you taught me something this week and smoke swag you actually brought something to my attention a while ago and I've been researching it I use a an iPhone and I do editing also on an iPad just with simple things but I never knew because Smoteswag, you, you always bring up the list and know the names of your new subscribers. I never knew who subscribed to my channel. I just knew there was a number. And I kept going, how do you guys know who's subscribing? Well, did some research online and you can't really find those settings on an iPhone or even an iPad unless you're in like a laptop mode or desktop mode, I think they call it. Well, I brought out an old laptop last week and fired it up and oh, there were all the names when I logged in. So I'm gonna try to use my uh, laptop more when uh, taking a look and seeing you know who the subscribers are because I'd like to thank them by name. But right now I've got 77 subscribers so that's a lot of names. But just know that I appreciate you subscribing and, and viewing. And th thanks guys for showing stuff. I don't think you, you know, um, intend to, but you're you're helping me out with when you show names or you're talking about YouTube because I'm a newbie. I I don't even know how to necessarily navigate it that well on the presenter side. So you guys have taught me a lot, and it means a lot. So thank you.
for this week's story, it's, it's being um, dedicated to the NFL draft. Even though I'm missing the boys of summer right now, and I know a lot of you like Double A Piper and uh, Pipe Man, uh, you know, we're missing the Tigers, we're missing all kinds of baseball. But this weekend I'm thinking football. And I'm one of those lonely, pathetic Lions fans, Detroit Lions fans, and a U of M fan, but we won't go there on this one. That rant might wait until uh, Labor Day weekend. Freaking hardball. Um, anyways. When I was young, or younger, back in, may have been late middle school, I'm a big Red Wings fan. And this story's going football, but I want to give you a quick where, where I'm going with this. Uh, you know, you growing up, you have your big, uh, you're a fan of a lot of football, baseball. You know, you just, you just, how do I put it? There was a hockey player on the Detroit Red Wings that I really idolized, I guess is the word. And my uncle called me up and said, you know, that player is uh, signing autographs at a comic book store or a card shop. And this was probably in the early 90s. And I thought it'd be a great thing to go get an autograph. You know, I love this hockey player. I have, you know, I bought a jersey of his. It'd be great to say hi to him. And I was so excited and have him sign that, that jersey. So my uncle takes me and his daughters to meet this hockey player. And I'm not gonna say the name, but let me just say it was very disappointing. I went up to get his autograph, you know, paid to get the autograph and I didn't even get a hello. Just signed my jersey and I, they passed me on. And you could tell he didn't wanna be there. And I know why, but it doesn't matter why for this story. So from there, I dedicated myself that if I ever meet anybody famous, I care if it's an athlete or a, maybe someone on TV or something like that, I'll never ask them for their autograph. If I get a chance to say something to them, I just want to thank them or say hi to them and treat them like a human being. Well... That brings us to the main part of the story. Back in summer of 94, my brother was working at Blockbuster Video and asked me if I wanted to come work there. And at the time I was working as a busboy at a bar and I just was ready to leave and go work at the video store. Something to do while you're in college. You know, I was at a community college here just for, you know, for two years before I transferred out. Well, the cool thing about this Blockbuster is where I live here in Rochester Hills, Michigan, Pontiac is only 10 minutes west of here in the city of uh, Auburn Hills as well. Well, back in the 90s and before that and a little after, the Detroit Lions used to play at the Pontiac Silverdome. So a lot of the players lived out here in Rochester Hills or some lived in Auburn Hills. Well, being a huge football fan and a lot of finding out a lot of the players went to this blockbuster video that we go to and ended up getting a job at for two years. I thought it'd be great because my brother says, yeah, it's great. You get to meet these guys, talk to them. Sorry, guys. My dog was whining. He was out here and needed to start going in. So didn't want you have to deal with it. Anyways. So we're sitting at, you know, working at, took the job at Blockbuster, finding out there's a lot of Detroit Lions players that come in. So my brother <clears throat> was telling me about it, and he says, you know, even Barry Sanders comes in and rents movies. And my brother talk, was telling me how he goes, one of the girls there that was behind the counter, when Barry came up one year, you know, he had messed up his knee. She asked him, you know, how are you doing? How's the knee? How's this and that? And Barry thanked her. 
Barry Sanders was like, thank you. Nobody's ever asked me how I'm doing, you know, or how I'm feeling or this and that. And he really appreciated it. I mean, Barry Sanders is, grew, lived in Rochester Hills, and we all knew him when we were little, or you knew about him in the area. And just everybody would talk about what a great guy he is. And he, he really he really was a part of our community. I mean, he would play basketball with the kids. You know, his he, he didn't, to me, he didn't have an ego. He was just a down-to-earth person. I mean, my gosh, if you said, hey, Mr. Sanders, he says, Mr. Sanders is my dad. You called me Barry. Well, anyway, so I get this, <clears throat> take the position. And throughout the, the first year, you know, you get to meet a lot of the, the Detroit Lions players, but never asked for an autograph. Just got to know them. Say hi to them. Talk to their wives. Talk to their kids. It was awesome. All these people that I just love that played football, getting to know those people. And we, my brother and I also worked out at Gold's Gym in Auburn Hills. And a lot of those football players were there. So you get to know them in and out of, of work. Just just it was f so much fun i'm like forget autographs i just like to know the person well it got so cool that uh robert massey i believe he was a corner or a safety i'm trying to remember and for the lions and i got to know him pretty well that the lions actually it was it, it was difficult to sell out all the seats at the uh silver dome i mean Let's face it, the Lions haven't been great in over 50 years. And the fact that that stadium, if I'm not mistaken, sat over 80,000 people, that Pontiac Silverdome, it was huge. Well, there was this one game, and the Lions were doing really good. This had to be 1995. They were doing pretty good. And they had a sold-out game. And I, I, I didn't get tickets. I couldn't get them. So I would watch them at home so that it wouldn't be blacked out. You could watch it at home. Well, Robert Massey came into work, and he's like, hey, Tony, you going to the game? I'm like, ah, no, Robert, I can't. Couldn't get tickets. You guys sold out, so I'm definitely going to be watching on TV. He's like, all right, cool. That's great. Well, coming to work the next time, which is only like the next day or the day after, and the store manager's like, hey, Tony, you have an envelope here from Robert Massey. I'm like, cool. I wonder what he get, why he gave me an envelope. And in it were his two tickets, his personal tickets. I guess each player gets enough for their family or maybe some guests. So he gave me his player tickets. I, mean, I was so grateful. So my brother couldn't go. He was going out of town. So I took one of the other managers who was a huge football fan too. I'm like, let's go. So we go to the game. And what was really cool was that we sat with all the wives and the kids. So they look at over at us and go, is that Tony and James? And we're like, hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, from Blockbuster? What? Robert said we could come. They're like, no, that's great. You know, so we got to hang out with the families, had great seats. I believe the Lions won the game. All that from just treating these guys, these players, like human beings and not some name on a card or a jersey. Not that that's wrong, but it's just you, you, they really enjoy when you talk to them as a human being, as a person, and not so much as maybe a name on a card. So now we come to the embarrassing part, and I'll try to make this quick. I had never seen in the first year Barry Sanders come into the store. One day, he finally comes in. And we're about a week or two into the preseason. Well, my goal was always to make sure that I let Barry know if he picks my line, to make sure, like that girl did, to make sure he's doing okay. You know, talk about him. Maybe get a good compliment or something. Just something. Anything. Well, he comes into the store. And my brother's like, hey, just, you know, Barry's in, 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 in the store getting a movie. So I'm like, oh my gosh, you know. So James, my brother, James, the other manager, my brother, and I, the three football geeks, are in there all geeking out. And Barry Sanders picks my line to come run his video. 
So I'm sitting there checking people out, nervous, trying to think, what am I going to say to them? What am I going to say to my, one of my heroes? One of the greatest football running backs of all time, if not the greatest. And I feel bad that he plays for the Detroit Lions because he'll never win a Super Bowl. The time comes, he comes up to the counter. And he had uh, some young lady with him. I don't know if it's his future wife or anything like that, but they're writing a movie. And I'm like, I got to say something. He's got to know that I know who he is. And I'm not, you know, this is my moment. I've been preparing for a year if this ever were to happen. It was coming from the heart, going to the brain. But what came out of here was the stupidest thing I could have ever said. I looked at Barry. I was like, Barry, are you getting a lot of rest? And he looked at me. No, I'm working my butt off. It's the preseason. I'm working hard. And I'm like, uh, uh, no, I know. Oh, my God. No, 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 that's that's fine. I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, and he, he nicely took his video. And I'm like, it's due back Wednesday by midnight. Oh, God. I'm looking at my one of my idols. And I'm like, you getting a lot of rest? What the hell? I just wanted to kick my own butt. Well, my brother and James look over at me, and they're like, that, what a moron you are. <laughs> oh, I totally blew that moment. Are you getting a lot of rest? Well, that's my tribute to the NFL. That's my NFL story. I hope you're getting a lot of rest out there, guys and gals. And again, I appreciate everything you've done for me. All the lessons learned from uh, when it comes to YouTube and how to use it. You may not have realized what you've done, but you guys have been a great, a great help. And I truly, when I say I pray and, and think about you, especially right now um, with uh, Smoke Swag Glass, <laughs> Your mom and family, I'm definitely praying to think about you. Curmudge and Piper, all you guys. I really mean it. But, I, but I'm going to wrap this video up. It's going pretty long. But I hope you like that story. My embarrassing story of how I blew it with Barry Sanders. You guys uh, take care. Have a wonderful weekend. And we'll see you next week.